Here is yet another outstanding periwinkle blue uh, volcanic glass paleo story stone face and mammoth effigy from Mount Shasta. Just a really excellent example here. Uh, th this volcanic glass from Mount Shasta is really beautiful glass. It's uh, I have a, a another one that's been videoed and posted to YouTube, one of my early posts, uh, that I believe is one of the finest mammoth effigies ever discovered made out of this periwinkle blue volcanic glass. This has also been known as Andara, Volc Andara glass or Andara crystal. But I uh, sent three samples to the University of Stephen Austin, Texas. And uh, it's a no very well-respected research university. And they uh, their geology department, I sent them a blue, a green, and a yellow uh, volcanic glass effigies for uh, XRF, X-ray fluorescence testing. Their geology department did an ex outstanding job and all three specimens were found to contain basically the same elements. There's 24 elements in this glass that are measurable and about 15 elements that are uh, indicated by LOD, uh, limit of detection, meaning that they're just trace elements can't even be hardly detected. Uh, they're, they're not measurable. So there's 24 uh, main elements in this uh, volcanic glass. And uh, what's not in the glass is just as uh, interesting and important as what is in the glass. What's not in the glass is there's no carbon in this glass, no hydrogen, no nitrogen, no, no oxygen in this glass, no nox oxygen in the glass, uh, no water in the glass because there's no hydrogen and no oxygen, and there's no sodium in the glass. Now, sodium has been added to silica to lower, lower, lower the melting point to make uh, the manufacture of glass commercially feasible. And uh, that's been going on for the last 3,500 years or, or better. Uh, since the Phoenician times, they've been adding soda, uh, which is uh, sodium, to uh, sand or silica to lower the melting point significantly enough to make uh, glass manufacturing economically feasible. This is a uh, volcanic. It's not a tektite. Tektites are very rich in oxygen. Uh, this has no oxygen at all in it. Zero oxygen, zero carbon, zero nitrogen, zero hydrogen, zero sodium. Very, very interesting what's not in the glass. But this is a beautiful piece of uh, volcanic glass. This glass comes from Mount Shasta, and uh, it was, it's also being mined currently in China out of lava flows. So there is a video on YouTube showing the mining of this glass out of lava flows in China. And it's also uh, found in uh, dry volcanic creek beds in Arizona. I've acquired uh, some from the finder there. And uh, then also from West Java, Indonesia. Java, Indonesia has a lot of volcanic glass, paleo, story stone effigies. Um, I was fortunate, I was, I was, uh, uh, after my discovery of the Paleo Story Stone Face and Mammoth effigy type uh, that I found in the Mojave Desert in October of 2020, I went on to discover that they are made out of every type of stone on the planet. They're found on every continent. I have examples of them from every continent except Antarctica. They're made out of every kind of rock, every kind of bone, uh, coral, you name it. Uh, it's, they're, they, they're found worldwide. There was obviously a paleo mammoth cult, uh, mammoth worship worldwide. I believe that the paleo Indians thought we evolved from the mammoth being the biggest, baddest animal in the jungle at the time. Uh, they go back to Homo heidelbergensis in Europe some 400,000 years. The Clactonians were uh, producing these, and Homo heidelbergensis were producing them. Neanderthals were producing them uh, in Europe. Uh, Homo erectus uh, were making etched examples back 500,000 to a million years ago, and Homo erectus was making them from 500,000 to 2 million years ago, or uh, as long as they inhabited the Earth. Uh, they, Homo habilis was making these in Africa as well. 
So these go back, I, I've confirmed now they go back 3.3 million years as to the oldest flaked known artifacts known to exist. And that those flaked artifacts from Africa uh, are mainly paleo face and mammoth effigy, what I call story stones. And uh, so I discovered these volcanic glass specimens. No one had uh, identified this volcanic glass as, uh, as, as being material that was ever used by paleo Indians in the production of paleolithic artifacts. So my discovery led me to this glass and these wonderful effigies. Uh, and it led me to be able to confirm that this is naturally occurring glass. Again, tektites uh, would be rich in oxygen and, and these have no oxygen. But uh, uh, just outstanding example here, what we have is a baby mammoth facing right. The faces are cool because they're flaked in here. Uh, there's the eye, the nose, and the mouth of the face looking up from the back of the mammoth. That's the old face. Then when you use this as the eye now and the nose and the mouth, now this becomes the young face looking off from the back of the mammoth. They did that and flaked it just like that intentionally to get that image. And then of course the mammoth is facing right. So we have a beautiful mammoth image there facing right. When we turn it this way, now we have uh, a mature mammoth with its big sweeping trunk coming down here, facing off to the left. That's a very nice mature mammoth right there facing off to the left. And we turn it this way, we have an outstanding mature mammoth with his hair tuft all carved up in the head here, hair, hair, hair yeah, above the head. It's massive hair tuft up there, and it's big sweeping trunk coming down to the right. That is an excellent mammoth image right there. It's an excellent mammoth image. Then we have another face looking off from the back of the mammoth there as well. And then let's see here. We have um, some more, a great imagery here of another baby mammoth with its little trunk off to the left there. And this has been beautifully etched. Those etching lines were, uh, Dr. Michael Gramley and I believe that the etching lines on these were produced with the likely quartz crystal or some type of crystal. And I have actually experimented with quartz crystal on this volcanic glass, and it does etch it quite nicely. That's the hair of the top of the head of the face here with the nose and the mouth looking off to the right. So we have a face looking off to the right, we have a little headband here, and then we have the hair up above the head there on that face looking off to the right. We have another older face looking off to the left as well. Older face with a mouth and a beard down here looking off to the left. But just outstanding flaking all the way around to form the perimeter of this piece. We even have another old face with the nose and the mouth and the eye looking up from the top of the hair tuft of the mammoth there. Very creative imagery uh, in, uh, in making these, uh, these effigies. Very creative. And uh, then we have this other one here. This one I already have done a, a, a wonderful video on this one. This is a beautiful mammoth facing left. Look at the edge work done on that. All the way around to form the perimeter to make the mammoth image and the face imagery. Mature mammoth facing left. Another Lady Nelly Mount Shasta volcanic glass from uh, Mount Shasta, California. These were dug up by Lady Nelly Thompson on her property in the early 70s, very late 60s, early 70s. And I bought these from the uh, individual who bought them from the finder, Lady Nellie Thompson. She bought them from Lady Nellie Thompson, uh, 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 the brunt of her collection, and then uh, sold me some of these pieces. These have been sold worldwide uh, since the 70s. But just beautifully flaked all the way around and etched. Here's the eye of the mammoth now facing right. Just outstanding. And again, the, the big droopy-nosed face looking off to the right. Then we have the eye here of the face with this, the nose and the mouth looking off to the left. 
but I have a video of this already on YouTube that you can refer to as well. Here's another great mammoth with the trunk sweeping down here and its eye up here, sweeping down to the left there. Wow, what a great mammoth image that is. And no doubt a face looking up from the back of the mammoth. Just outstanding Lady Nelly, Mount Shasta, Periwinkle Blue, Volcanic Glass, Paleo, likely Clovis, Story Stone, Face, and Mammoth Effigy.